Well, before I get started on the next pen turning project, I want to update you on the stick pen. If you remember, it took me quite a while to make that first one. I had a terrible time with it. Just about everything that could go wrong went wrong. I turned the other three. Remember I made four blanks? I've already given away the first two. These are the last two. And they went a lot faster and a lot easier. And it could well be that Lee Valley is right. These may easily be the easiest pen to turn. Uh, but anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this one here. And Lee Valley calls it their Woodworker's Pencil. And uh, I guess we should open the package and see what the hardware looks like, right? Oh, by the way, I've already made one of these before. So hopefully we're not going to have too many problems. Now, as I mentioned, I did make one of these before. I think it was four or five months ago I made it. And I gave it to my brother, who is also into woodworking. The difference between him and me is that he actually makes money at it. Anyway, got all these little parts here. This is a very sturdy kit, by the way. There's nothing flimsy about this at all. And it looks quite nice once it's done. Now on my uh, brother's pen, I used oak. And that looked really good. So I'm going to use oak on this one as well. Now I've laid out the parts for the button click pen, which is this one right here. And uh, you can see that the diameter of the parts for the woodworker's pencil is a little bit more heavy duty, especially the cartridge. In fact, uh, this uh, tube will fit inside of this tube. So if I was to use three quarter inch stock, it would probably work, but I want this pen to have a much bolder, heavy duty look. After all, it's for a workshop, right? And uh, anyway, We'll see what we can do here. Now I don't know what kind of oak this is. To me it's just oak. I salvaged it from the framework of a shipping crate. And you can see the staple holes here at the end. And it's quite a bit thicker than the three quarter inch stock that I have from that piece of mahogany. It gives me a lot more room for turning down. That way I can make it a little bigger if I want to. Now I don't want to be wasting a whole big bunch of time here showing stuff that I've already shown in detail in a previous episode. I'm going to try and concentrate on what is different in each one of these pen kits. And here I've made enough blanks for four pens. I made the stupid mistake of forgetting to mark these things as I was cutting them. You want the grain to match up. Now I was able to find the two that are a pair. It'll look a lot better on the pen if the grain all matches up. For instance, these two are similar, but when you put them together, you can see they're just a little bit different, especially on this side. This one here looks pretty good. I'm pretty sure that these two were a match. I glued in the brass tubes with CA glue and to trim them off, instead of using the barrel trimmer, I used a disc sander. That works pretty good too. Now here's a place where it's really easy to make another mistake. And that is, these are a pair. And you want to make sure that when you put them on the mandrel, that you keep them like this. Don't accidentally get one turned around. Because then the grain isn't going to match properly. So anyway, now it doesn't matter if these get twisted a little bit one way or the other, you know, it'd be nice if they stayed straight, but they're probably not. Uh, the main thing is that they didn't get turned around.
Now when these two pieces are pressed together, they'll be pressed together on this little simulated hexagon nut here. And so, in other words, they'll only be about an eighth of an inch apart. So, that means that I have to be very careful that I have this diameter the same as this diameter when I'm turning it down. Because there's such a big space here, it would be real easy to accidentally make one noticeably smaller or bigger than the other. Well, I've worked my way up to 800 grit here. It feels silky smooth. Well, you got to admit, quite a difference. These two pieces used to look like this. They actually turned out really nice. Now the way it's laid out here is pretty much the way it's going to go. I'll first press this piece into here, then I'll press this piece into here, then I'll press these two pieces together, then I'll press this piece into here, and then this will screw into this after I put this little nut on the threads here. Now to press this piece into here, I want to have it against the metal. So I want metal against metal here. And here we go, very gently. Okay. This little decorative nut goes on here. And I know it looks like the nib should be here. 
but it's not. It actually goes like this. And this screws into those threads. Like this. And there we are. It's finished. Now I'll show you how it works. It's kind of unique. Now you may recall I said there's nothing flimsy about this kit. That's the lead. There's already one in there. Now to get the lead to come out, you simply push the end in like this. And the lead comes out. And if you hold it down like that, you can adjust the length of the lead. When you release it, it clamps down on the lead and keeps it that way. Kind of unique. Here, I'll do it again. Well, there it is. The Woodworker's Pencil from Lee Valley. What I'm going to do is, in the comments section below, I'm going to put a link so that if you're interested, you can get this kit for yourself.